Hi designers, today I will be showing you how to create custom animations in Jitter video. So if you want to animate an element, you click it and go to new animations. And then you see we have template in and template out animations, but we also support custom animations if you want to have a fully unique animation. All the animations that I will apply to the square are more general animations, but some objects like the circle or the star shape have their own even more specific animations. So let's get started with move. The move animation will move an element from one position to another, and you can select the end position by dragging the arrow up here or setting a X and Y value up here. Second, we have scale. The scale animation will scale up or down a element by setting a percentage to which you want your element to go to. So let's say we say 200%, then it will scale this square to 200% of its initial value. Next up, we have rotate. The rotate animation will well, rotate your element. And if you set a positive value, it will rotate to the right. And if you set a negative value, it will rotate to the left. Next up, we have opacity. And the opacity will basically let you fade in or fade out an element. So if I set this to 0%, you will see that this element will be faded out from 100% to 0%. Next up, we have color, and the color animation will just change the color of an element. So if we set this to red, you will see there will be a transition from purple to red. Next up, we have shadow. The shadow animation will, well, give a shadow to your elements. So as you see, now the shadow becomes visible during the animation. Next up, we have a very interesting one, which is hide and show. And this doesn't do much because it's not really an animation. So when you set this to hide or show, it will just be a bowl, so you cannot edit anything to it. It will just be a little circle and it will either hide or show the animation. And this is particularly handy if you want to, uh, for example, have an element that only comes in very late in your animation, but you don't want to use our template in animations and you can set it to hide in the very beginning and then later on set it to visible once you want to animate the actual element. Resize is similar to scale, but with resize you have more flexibility because with scale you can only do a perfect scale that will not stretch the element, but with resize you can for example only resize the downside or two sides or stretch it in a strange way and that is not possible with scale. Corner radius will give a corner radius to an element. So if we set a corner radius of 20, for example, you will see that it now gets a corner radius. And if you set it high enough, it will even become a full circle. So that is corner radius. And stroke will give your element a stroke. Now there is something interesting to notice here. If we set a stroke to red and we animate this, you will see that it first becomes black and then becomes red. And the reason is that we didn't have an initial stroke, so it uses a default black stroke as initial. So if we want this to become from red to red in the animation, we should set a initial stroke in the design of stroke of red to zero pixels weight. And if we then animate this, this will become from red to red. But there is a little mistake, the stroke has no width. So right now it will go from red to red instead of if there is no stroke selected, it will go from black to red. Now these were the more general animations. Now let's move on to the more special shapes, starting with the circle. So the circle has a custom animation that says arc, and this gives us three possibilities. The first one is donut, which is, as you might expect, make a donut from the circle. So it will create a cutout. And this cutout is really a cutout. It's not just white, you can see through it, and you can see what is behind. Second, we can set a sweep. And what sweep will do is make a cutout in the side of this donut. So if we set this to 50%, it will, well, now it will just cut it in two. But if we set this to, for example, 80%, you will see that there is a little cutout right here. And start angle is the angle with which you want your circle to start. Now start angle obviously only has an effect when it is not a full circle, because if it's a full circle, well, a full circle turn around is still a full circle. And then lastly, we have star. And the custom animation of a star is the star shape. So you can actually set the amount of spikes you want to have on your star. And even when you set an amount of spikes, you can set a thickness for these spikes that will even manipulate your star more. 
and you might have noticed that in all the custom animations that Shader offers, we have this little section that says animation, which has a duration and easing property, and duration is basically the length and easing is basically how it looks, but we have a completely different video on that and I will link that in the right upper corner. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and we will respond as soon as possible.